here's the thing as a, as a registered and certified bong owner I have to say that bong <laughs> bongs registered certified. I went through my 26 hours of that's bong right. training. That's right. When yeah. I helped him update his resume, we put it right there. It was, yeah, you yeah. know. Listen, you need you need to understand a few things about bongs if you're going to use a bong. So yeah, you got to get the certification, you know. If you're going to be street legal anyway. But um <laughs> street legal bongs. I, uh, yeah. Uh you're inspected uh, biannually. It's, it's I, a thing. I just feel like, you know, the bong user gets a bad rap because most like a lot of bong users don't empty their bong water every time they use it like that shit starts f growing fruiting bodies within 24 hours oh you know, god yeah it starts growing fungus in that water immediately as soon as you've used it so yeah you change that water every fucking time you use the bong or you don't Welcome to Storytime with Tom and Mike. I'm Tom. And I'm fucking Mike. Yeah, that's right. I'm Mike. And tonight, once again, we have with us Amber. Hello, Amber. Hello. Nice to be here again. Oh, my gosh. What a week. I don't know why I said it, because I didn't do anything. Actually, I did. That's not entirely true. I want to plug the gaming channel real quick, actually. Because Mike and I, last week, in the hottest day of summer, clan crowded into my little office here at like probably 105 degrees and Fans recorded air conditioning <laughs> yeah yep yeah it was brutal but we recorded about three hours worth of footage i boiled it down into six episodes uh the first one and then they're going to be every friday so the first one drops on friday the 7th at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Gaming with Tom and Mike. Now that I've started putting content back on the site, because I've been putting a lot of old, like, unintelligible gaming content, old objectively bad games content up. Um, so now it's it, you can find it on YouTube again. If you actually type in Gaming with Tom and Mike, oh. something comes up again. We're, so, we're not going to find that fucking random video of Tom Brady and no. some dude. Yeah, I, we typed so I guess in. His name was Mike. I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah, we typed in gaming with Tom and Mike in you in YouTube, and it doesn't come. It wasn't coming up with the channel. Well, I think that's because we hadn't published anything new in over a year. Could but be. I mean, it was still one of those things where it was like, but we're getting this thing about Tom Brady. We're not even getting our own channel. Like, and if you can't find it, by the way, on YouTube, you can just go to TomAndMike.com and click on the Gaming with Tom and Mike link at the top. That's why I've been telling everybody you. how to get there. It's the easiest way. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Because if you can't remember TomAndMike.com, then, you know, I can't help you. <laughs> you, mean you have no interest in the podcast because that's, you know, that's a... A lot of part of the uh, name of the uh, uh, podcast, too. Okay, but question. Do you have my, MikeandTom.com as well? Because what no. do people flip the names? Oh, I think I'm going to have to buy MikeandTom.com. MikeandTom.com. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> Just so you can sing it. Yeah. Which one is this? Is Venture the one on your lap no, right no, now? No, no, this no. Uh, this is the mother of all of them. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's, 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 that's pickles. Yeah, and there's, there's her anus. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, why not? Mm hmm. Why not get up here and keep rubbing on my phone and my hand while I'm trying to steady the phone? I think this just adds to the charm. This feels like early Tom and Mike. Amber, our earliest episodes, we would do this. Mike would be right where he is today, sitting in his living room. And Actually, I was sitting chair. down in the next air, down in my sunken porch, if you will. Oh, no, you're not no, in the porch. I don't need you in my face. I don't need you in my face. You, you're gonna sit on me. Just sit down, please. Yeah. You, you, you're not in the sunken area anymore. No, okay. no. We we moved up into the what was the original living room again. Okay. So. Okay. It's not that it matters. Like anybody has any fucking idea besides my brother what my house looks or you what my house mm -hmm. looks like. Mm -hmm. It's important to me. It helps me 
form a mental picture. I could draw a map. No, we show a diagram of Mike's house. Yeah. I literally love knowing what it looks like where people are so I can like picture them. I'm like, tour the house time with Tom and Mike. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can make your house in The Sims. There you go. Yeah. That, that idea is terrible. Stop. I don't need you in my face. Please stop making me talk to you while I'm doing this too. Maybe that's the goal. That is the goal. You know this. Yeah. That is like, cat is not being talked. You're not talking to me. Therefore, I'm going to be in your face. Hey, did you know, uh, you know, just to change the subject, that uh, Walmart has started to make copies of uh, Eminem Mars candy bars. Okay. What do you mean copies? Like generic like, brands? Yeah, literally like a generic brand of them. They have like a, uh, a Snickers, which is, is this name just rolls off the tongue. Wait till I tell you what it's called. It's called Peanut Caramel Nougat Bar. <laughs> and they have a Milky Way, which is called Caramel Nougat Bar. <laughs> and wow. they have a Three Musketeers, which is called... Fluffy chocolate nougat bar. <laughs> and they have Twix. They have a Twix also, which, um, like, the caramel's really sweet in it, and, and the cookie doesn't quite taste the same as a Twix, but it's still really good. It's called um, Caramel Cookie Bar. Like, they, they couldn't even so call them, like, yeah, like, like, like crappy off names, like, I don't know, like, instead of a Snickers, I don't know, maybe a Chortle. A chortle bar. <laughs> Hunger bar. Or a giggle. A giggle Chortle's bar. Chortle's adorable. I would I would buy that just for the name. That's cute. And like a Milky Way could be, you know, a galaxy bar or something if that's not already used. And I don't know about Twix, but a Three Musketeers, I think that uh, the guys I work with and I decided it was going to be the two and three quarter Musketeers. How about for Twix? It'd <laughs> because be... it's almost like the original, but not quite. Twix or chocolate caramel buddies. Yeah, That's what they yeah, should be you called. Know, something or, or I almost said the twat bar. <laughs> <laughs> this bar is a real twat. <laughs> um, this reminds me of a Bill Hicks bit where he was talking about when he was in England. And uh, Bill Hicks was known for being very anti-capitalist, you know, and, and very like outspoken about like that kind of thing. And and uh, there, some people in England were like, "We want you to be a a product spokesman." And he's like, "Well, what's the product?" And it's like orange drink. He's like, "Fucking <laughs> orange drink! What kind of socialist nightmare is this? You guys really have a finger on my act when you think that I'm gonna buy. Oh, when I'm done ranting about elite corporate power, I get a little parched, so I reach for orange drink." That uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love your your laugh. It it makes me happy. <laughs> I've only heard you yelling at cats today, so to hear your laugh is well, very yeah, good. Yeah. I actually had a relatively decent day today. It was just irritating because, I mean, I know they just want my attention because they love me, but it's never, like, the cats don't sit on my chest. They sit on my legs in my lap usually, but they've always got to do a lap around my face and, and everything else, and it's just, it's, it's, it's not the right time. I will kiss them all individually and allow them to rub my face when we're done. Yeah. Because I love them all, even though they make me very angry. <laughs> yeah, I always have Dexter. <laughs> Dexter always has to go out right when I'm in the middle of like editing or something. I'm like, oh my God, right now? Really? I just yeah. hit a workflow. You know, it's like, it's very frustrating. But then, you know, like you're out there with him and you're just like well all right i'm not at my desk so i'll just slow down and accept it and and just take you know that uh that's something i've been working on a lot like acceptance you know it's hard man to uh to 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 uh i don't know to accept things <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on acceptance, and it's hard to uh, accept things. <laughs> well, I was, I was, I was like, this is comedy poison, and and I was trying to like drift out of it, and I was like, I can't find a, a subtle way, so I'm just gonna drop the subject. I can change subjects, which is the first thing I notice when we hop on here. Like, it's the range of Zoom 
uh, like names that come up. So I'm, you know, first name dot last name lowercase, like my email address at work. You're, you know, just straight up just Tom Cash, like you write anywhere. And then we have Mike, who is Kink Daddy. Kink Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I've knew. I've used so many names on shit. <laughs> that that was the first one that popped up like on the Zoom. I've never used it on Zoom before, and it was like, "Do you want to be known?" And I was like, "Sure, why not? Why not go with that?" <laughs> it's like it knew you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I, I'm convinced that the Android phones that I had been avoiding all this time, but now I eventually caved into are 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 tracking and learning everything about me and they're going to take over my bixby is going to take over my life mm -hmm. i don't i don't i never used bixby bixby i didn't like his name i was like don't fuck off bixby i don't want to talk to you the, the the name of my first best friend was was jonathan bixby oh really oh so it kind of, I was like, oh, it's like a nod to him. I haven't seen him since we were in, what, second grade? I think his family moved away and I never saw him again. Oh, that's sad. It's sad. Yeah. yeah. Well, Bigsby will know now and will suddenly pop up with, do you know this person? Like on social media. Mm -hmm. So. Right? It's just going to like find him and be like, here, Michael, we found him for you. And yeah, it's gonna exactly. Be Although in a female voice, she'd be like, "Hey, Michael, we found him." I don't know because I always make my my voice stuff be a girl. I, I don't know why. I just do. Hey, Michael, we found him. <laughs> hey, babe. <laughs> Hi, well, Michael. <laughs> Lately, I've been striking gold with uh, with saying to people, "Hey, have you seen this person or this person?" I was talking about somebody who um, shops in the place that I work and I commented hey have you guys ever seen this person that comes in here they always smell like balls and bong water <laughs> and sure enough they showed up today it was fucking amazing <laughs> and I was like and I, I looked at the other dude I was working with and I was like you can wait on them I'm not doing it today and then he comes back to me and he's like oh my god you were fucking right <laughs> balls and bong water I said yeah that's uh, a always. pretty ugh. It's it's a bad combination. Yeah. You know, here's the thing. As a as a registered and certified bong owner, I have to say that bong <laughs> bongs registered and certified. I went through my 26 hours of That's bong right. training. That's right. When I yeah. helped him update his resume, we put it right there. It was. Yeah, you yeah. Know. Listen, you need you need to understand a few things about bongs if you're going to use a bong. So yeah, you got to get the certification. You know, if you're going to be street legal anyway. But. Um, <laughs> Three legal bonds. I, uh, yeah. Uh, They're inspected biannually. It's, I, it's a thing. I just feel like, you know, the bong user gets a bad rap because most, like, a lot of bong users don't empty their bong water every time they use it. Like, that shit starts growing fruiting bodies within 24 hours. Oh, you know, God. Yeah, it starts growing fungus in that water immediately as soon as you've used it so yeah you change that water every fucking time you use the bomb or you don't use the bomb i did not know that and i've known people that don't do that yeah and you should use distilled water too because then you're not getting any impurities which helps keep the water from like staining the glass and stuff like that but yeah yeah good bong knowledge man i mean you know if you're gonna use a bong you need to know that shit because you can I make yourself so sick title. bong knowledge <laughs> the bong show the bong show welcome <laughs> to the bong show <laughs> everybody's every contestant has to like do a massive rip and then, <laughs> and then try to like do some weird task, like solve a Sudoku puzzle or something like that. If something tells me a catchy title like that might just bring in some new listeners. I think so. Yeah. Too bad like, we... Are they really talking about bongs? Bong. You broke my bong in half. It's, I guess it's better than the dong show. Although we mm. probably get people watching that one too, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it's... I'd probably listen. Yeah, who you guys doesn't know want me? To... <laughs> There's a possibility dongs are going to be there. I guess you know, my morbid curiosity will take over as well. I just think... and I'll be like, I think I need to watch that. Dong is probably the funniest euphemism for penis there possibly could be. 
Like, it, can you think of anything funnier than dong? Like, just in sort of like dong, you know? I don't know. Yogurt Slinger has always been one that made me laugh, too. <laughs> but that's so exotic. I'm talking, like, of the ordinary, like, yeah, okay. Like, you could use any term and turn it into a euphemism for genitals. Baby but... batter dispenser? Yeah, exactly. Like, you can go as far down the pathway as you want. But I'm talking, like, single, one word, just guttural utterances. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, dong I get you. and doink and boner <laughs> and Dude. rod and showed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, but I think that dong is probably the funniest. The dong bar. The chode the bar. Uh, yeah, the chode bar. The chode <laughs> bar sounds like something that, that uh, Walmart might sell in the future. It sounds... <laughs> It sounds like It'll a really be like their version of a chunky. It sounds like a really bad gay the bar. Chode bar. Like spell it on up to the chode bar. Everybody's <laughs> short and fat here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least you know what you're getting, right? You know, there's no there's no like surprises to be had later the, in the evening. You're like, oh yeah, I knew you were a chode. That's cool. Oh, <laughs> I, yeah, can, I, know. I can work with it. <laughs> <laughs> I never finished my thought on the candy bar. The, uh, the the Three Musketeers one tastes just like a Three Musketeers. The Milky Way one tastes just like a Milky Way to me. The mm-hmm. Snickers one, the chocolate is fucking weird. I don't even know how. Like, why would they have different chocolate on one of them? And then the Twix one is good, but it doesn't. I don't think it tastes like a Twix personally. I know Mike being a, con- a candy bar connoisseur, you're familiar with the fast break. Amber, are you familiar with the fast break? Yeah, oh. I love a fast break. I do too. And Ooh. I figured Never out. Never a lady for a fast break. I was, <laughs> I was working in this office that had like candy for sale. Like, you know, like sort of like the trust thing. Like you put in quarters and you grab whatever you want. And it's like the honor system, but it was pretty stupid to rip off where you work. So everyone was cool about it. But um, they they didn't have fast breaks, but they had mu- three musketeers, and they had peanut butter cups. And I figured out that if you take peanut butter cups and mush them into a a, 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 a three musketeers bar, it takes on the property of a fast break, because all fast break really is is peanut butter flavored nougat. Yeah, you're a visionary. That's pretty smart. Yeah. It's it's all it's all about alchemy. The alchemy of chocolate. Yes. It's Ooh. like Wonka. Like Did you see the new Wonka movie? I haven't. It is pre- Oh wow, that's a shame. It's pretty good. I saw pretty that good. Wonka exhibit that was wonky that they did that we were ripping off a whole bunch of people and it was just like <laughs> wonky Wonka. It was just like cardboard and like in an empty warehouse and like almost nothing was actually Willy Wonka. It was pretty bad. Did you guys hear about that? No. It was actually his cousin Billy Wonka. Motherfuckers always trying to rip (laughs) shit off. Yeah. Or Wally Wonka. (laughs) Wally Wonka. No, I'm not familiar with this thing you're talking about. So it was an exhibit? Yeah, yeah, an immersive experience. I'm sending you a link about it now because you're going to have to read about this. It was okay. um, pretty bad. It was in Scotland. Um, it... <laughs> Scotland, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh like that. <laughs> um, you you got to see the pictures. It's, it's better oh, seen God. to be believed. But yeah, just imagine like an empty warehouse and like there's a wall and it's got a poster on it of Willy Wonka, but it doesn't fit oh the wall. God. It's like shrunk in the middle. And they're just like, you know, here's here's a lollipop. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like it was really bad. The saddest thing I think I've ever seen. <laughs> it was really bad. It's like a, an abandoned like part of an airport is what it looks like. <laughs> yes, it's like, like an hangar. airport hangar and there's like yeah. a s- sad five part rainbow arc that someone like obviously like built for like a float parade float years ago and they're like fuck it we'll use it for this too how did they address the oompa loompas 
I don't, oh, I don't remember. Let me look it up. It's like cause... killing children, or was it picture of the munchkins from the Wizard of Oz? Or, they, they, just, you know. they just found like a, uh, a bunch of a, random amputees. Well, no. The, <laughs> what? No. Because <laughs> no, it would make them short, right? Oh, my God. It's I don't even. Terrible. Here, let me show you the Oompa Loompa. Um, <laughs> what is wrong with you? I was gonna say little little Oompa Loompa, like little you Grant, like like uh, celebrity impersonators. But no, you had to go with. Wow. <laughs> so she got really famous too because she was trying to. Um, it's it's it's. A woman in a really bad green wig that looks nothing like an Oompa Loompa with a science kit in front of her. Speaking of candy alchemy, you know, um, <laughs> it's it's not much. And they weren't given a script either. And like the script that they had was made by AI and you could tell and it made like no sense and it was weirdly creepy. So just a wonderfully thought out so, exhibit all around. What, was it just a joke? It sounds like it's a fucking joke. Uh, they charge people for it. Well, that's the real joke. Yes. Yeah, that's that pretty people bumpy, paid. Yeah. Well, that anyone paid for that and didn't immediately post it on social media and be like, don't go to this. Don't tell all your friends, all your family, everyone, don't go to this fucking waste of time. It was like, a, it was, it's like going to like a dirt mall. You know, have you, well, actually, dirt malls are fun. I don't know. I was going to say, that sounds way better than what this was. They posted about it immediately, though. That's why I know about it. Yeah. People were like, what the ever living fork, you know? But you know what? That actually probably draws more people who will pay just to see the debacle of it. Yeah. You know, they do say that any kind of, like, social, any kind of attention to your whatever it is is positive because it still gathers viral any kind of attention to your whatever it is. Well, you Any know what publicity I mean. is no, good publicity. Yeah, that's, that's what, what whatever I meant to say. Let me translate for Tom right now. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, no, I'm, I'm down with what he's saying. He's like, you don't know how to quite describe it either, so whatever it is fits perfectly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm just trying not to talk myself into... I have this bad... I don't know if listeners have ever noticed this, but I have this bad tendency of, like, talking myself into a corner, and then I forget what I was... my point was, and then I have to finish lamely. So I'm trying to make that more funny when I do it. <laughs> and instead of just... And just sort of taper off, I'm kind of, like, just end with, like, a really bad ending. And that just feels more comfortable. And Mike lets me do it. Michael let the, let let me circle the drains of hell for a while. Well, I mean, it's funny, you know. Who's that character on Parks and Rec? I'm forgetting his name all of a sudden. But like he would sing something and it'd be really good, but then he uh, John Ralphio and he would say like one more word extra so it was really like he ended on a lame note. It reminds me of that. Um I actually saw that guy uh live. Uh he hosted a improv yeah, he's an improper. There's a Netflix show about it too. Yeah, he, we we saw him live in DC. It was really good. Um, yeah, he was just he just basically like spent about maybe 15 minutes talking to the crowd and like asking questions and stuff and develop. And he's like, okay, all right, cool, cool, cool. And then at the end of that 15 minutes, he's like, all right, I think I have an idea what we're gonna do. All right, let's go with it. And then they just improv based on the prompts they were given at the beginning and did a, a good hour and a half long show. <laughs> and I mean, it was coherent. You would have thought it was scripted. Um, and when I see stuff like that, it intimidates the hell out of me because it makes me realize like how much work I would need to do to get to that level. Like I, I one of the things, as I said, I've been going through our old content on, on uh, gaming and you know, I often go back to our old face, old podcasts to uh, create best of episodes, and I've noticed that I I'm not as funny as I used to be. And I was like, what the hell is up with me? And I think the problem is that I'm I'm so keyed up about trying to be funny that I, I forget to be mm. funny. You know, it's like I'm so keyed up and on point to be like. Uh, show is on that uh, I'm not having fun anymore. So I'm trying to break that habit tonight. You can have fun with me. <sighs> oh my. Oh my. <laughs> I do that just to get reaction. 
It's from my <laughs> That changes everything. <laughs> I think you How said we get... have a game to play, right? Today? I do have a game to play, yes. All right. So uh, the name of this game is Real News versus Fake News. Oh, dear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you guys uh, a, a headline and then give you a little lead in, sort of an over, overview of what the story is about. And then you have to de decide whether this was a real news item or a false news item. So first one. Man tries to board plane with live labs lobster as carry-on item. A lobster weighing 20 pounds was discovered in the bag of a, lob of a passenger taking a jet blue flight out of Boston's Logan Airport. That sounds like it could be real to me. But 20 pounds is a massive fucking lobster. <laughs> yeah, isn't like a normal lobster like five pounds or something? Yeah, I gotta go with that being fake. Okay, well, we have another one to compare, right? Or is it is it just every single one? Is a we false have to decide. Yeah, each one's okay. uh, yes or no. Yeah. Okay, I'll roll with Mike and we'll say fake. Okay, it was real. Ah, dang it! I'm That's never trusting you again. <laughs> <laughs> I will base every decision with you for the rest of the time I know you all today. <laughs> <laughs> you have led me astray, you motherfucker. You guys got me with 20 pounds I mean, as big. I, I think I Tom really, was being misleading there. I, was, I really I feel was like a I little thought it was leading. Real, but it was the 20 pound lobster that made me go, what? Well, if it helps any in the article, uh, it does remark that it's absurdly large, that, that no one had ever seen a, a lobster that big at the airport. No like, one's ever seen a lobster this size. People are saying it's huge. <laughs> I wish you could do his voice. That would have made that a lot. I wish I could too. Just for that, though, not for any other reason. He does that hiss at the beginning of everything. God damn it, that's the biggest fucking lobster I've ever seen, boy. All right, number two. Woman finds three foot snake hiding in her Christmas tree. Holiday decorating took a potentially deadly turn when this Australian woman discovered a venomous tiger snake slithering through her fully trimmed Christmas tree. I really feel like that's true. They threw in Australia so that you believe it. <laughs> Everything in Australia is trying to kill you, including your Christmas tree. Yeah, right? So? Well, I said I'd never trust him again, and I'm a liar, so I'll go with true. You are correct. All right. I tr your trust has been restored. I'm Woo. wiping off the sweat because it's hot. Ugh. No, I it's was like, that was all I was doing, yeah. It's, I was feeling I'm, relieved. I'm just wet. I like regretted saying Whoa. that as soon as I said that. <laughs> I was like, don't, Amber, don't say it. I am well, now uh... too. <laughs> You've made me moister than an I'm, oyster. I'm so moist. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, you're going to stay moister than an oyster now. I know you will at some point. I probably after will. I, pro well, I know I will. It's catchy. It's it's especially uh, disturbing, though, when it's a picture of an old lady on a meme saying it. I'm going to learn a lot about my reaction faces today because you guys yeah. say things that make me. I'm going to know what my disgusted grimace looks like, like burned into my mind. You know, <laughs> just, I just saw it. I'll make sure to, to include your close ups frequently throughout the video. Oh, so God. That... <laughs> no, I'm doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy now you're snorting <laughs> you made me fucking snort oh that was you i'm looking at a different well, screen it with me yes it just involuntarily came out <laughs> it's the call of my people <laughs> <laughs> oh that means you're my people now yeah but I, we are we're a tribe that's true and sweet i'm not gonna ruin this moment by saying something like chode or my oompa loompa <laughs> <laughs> you my oompa loompa now, yo. <laughs> are you gonna be put down with the oompas? <laughs> why aren't Oompity there? Girl. Why aren't there some <laughs> fuck like you know how like the the insane clown posse's fan base all dresses like clowns? Why isn't there like a, a a burly bunch of dudes dressed up like 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 oompa loompas? And why have we never seen a female oompa loompa? I want to know. Didn't they wear later hosen in the they original did. movie? They did. So, like, I think Germany is really <laughs> during Oktoberfest. 
It's just celebrating the Oompa Loompa heritage. I think the Oompa Loompas in one of the movies were like genderless, right? They were, they just, what's their gender? Loompa, you know? I, I, yeah, I, I really yeah. feel like there is not a gender in the original movie. In the second one, it's that Deep Blue plays all of them. I think is what the guy's name is, the actor. Deep Roy. Or, Deep Roy, Deep Blue, Deep Roy, I don't fucking know. <laughs> fucking <number>. Deep Blue. <laughs> I, I don't know why that's the first thing that came out of my mouth. Look, sometimes I don't think before I speak. That might surprise you, but it's true. Yeah, uh, Deep Roy, but uh, two was definitely a guy. Okay. You know. So, I, I don't I don't know where I was going with that. After I said Deep Blue, I, you know, I fucked it up. Because wasn't that the name of the IBM computer? Yes. That played chess? Yes. I thought of fucking Oompa Loompas being an IBM computer. <laughs> <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> Florida Town bans all colors except beige to reduce stress levels. Following an independent study, the color beige had been found to be the least stress-inducing color. In a desperate attempt to curtail crime, Pensacola, Florida enacted an ordinance that all citizens wear beige clothing over their regular clothing when on public property. Oh, okay. This sounds crazy enough to be true because it's from Florida, but if there's one thing we've learned about Florida, it's that they don't give a fuck about anybody in that state. So that's false. I also just feel like beige isn't the calmest color. Like maybe I like disagree with the base assumption. Beige is the blandest color, perhaps. Yeah, like I, I feel like a lot of doctor's like offices green. are really, like blue. Like Tom is really calming right now, very. Uh, I might come back with blue light during our next segment or something because I want to. I want to vibe on this. You got the blue thing in the background, Mike. You've got some blue. I've also, but green is a very calming color to me. Oh, green mm -hmm. is like my favorite. It's just like because nature. You know what I mean? Like, it's lovely. Red is literally my favorite color, but that's a color of anger. So. I think a good burgundy, though, is like a great room color. Man, yeah, that's also, yeah, I'd agree with that. So is it false? Uh, it is false, yes. Yes! Yes! Next. Champ, po champ. Police report to a, police respond to a report of a person dressed as a cow stealing milk. According to this website, an 18-year-old man dressed as a cow allegedly swiped 28 gallons of milk, 26 gallons of milk from a Walmart at 10.35 p.m. Wednesday night. But the best part, however, was that he might have been after his... Okay, I left a part in. I guess I kind of gave the game away on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true? <laughs> yes. So that's a freebie. How does one make away with 26 gallons? I guess from a back door or something like that where people aren't seeing you. Yeah. But, like, there's no way you could possibly, like, I've just got one of those diseases where I have elephantitis and I'm dragging this shit through the store with me. I don't know. I once dressed as a cow for Halloween a couple of years ago when we went grocery shopping. And then when I got to the dairy section, I kind of froze and didn't know what to do. And I was like, do I look longingly, lovingly? Do I look turned on? Do I look angry? Like, how do I feel? And people were like commenting on it. They kept walking by and they're like, you're a cow in the cow move section. I'm like, yes. Cow move. <laughs> they just grabbed some of the book and been like, I always wondered. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Scientists develop plant-based meat that tastes exactly like cardboard. Working on a new menu item for an undisclosed fast food chain, a scientist at MIT developed a new plant protein that, when grilled, unexpectedly tastes exactly like cardboard. The team responsible claims that this was unintentional, and they aren't sure that the food is of any use to humans. It sounds like an Onion article. Hey, can we? I, I wonder if we could get bonus points for saying it was probably Burger King. <laughs> it might have been McDonald's because Burger King already has plant-based uh, burgers. It was scientists at MIT, not Burger King. Hmm. But they were well, developing. I think they were developing for an undisclosed food fast food chain. Okay, okay. Um, I feel like that could be true. Because plant based could taste like cardboard because it's paper and you know. I don't know, that sounded I like don't know a... why they tell somebody though. <laughs> why would they sounded... be like, Oh, we made this other one taste like shit, but we didn't want to tell you about that one. I, I feel like it's false. I want to stand up for this one because it feels like... Uh, we get divided. Like a, 
I know. I I don't know what to do. Is that, your final, is that your final answer, Amber? No, I'm easily persuaded. Do you think I should go true? <laughs> no, no. You you choose what you want. I think you should go false on this because if I'm wrong, hey, you're at one ahead of me. Oh, I thought we were a team. I always play a team game. Well, I'm versus... saying yeah, we're a team, but you're going to be one better at doing this than me. Is that team better? plus one. Okay, I will do false. You are correct. Oh. That was oh, you you made got up. Me. All right. New York City introduces silent subway cars where talking is prohibited. For great quiet cars, this new ordinance allows for silent cars during a evening train run. Uh, once in every three train features a no talking policy as well as restrictions on mobile device use. I think this is true because I'm pretty sure I read about this. I'm going to say true to you. you. I think there's but probably other countries who have done this. Yeah, it's yeah. the New York that makes me wonder. Yeah, but... I, unfortunately, that is false. Uh, I, mean, I would like that to be you, true. You don't fucking tell me what to do. Yeah. You know. I'll but talk when I fucking want. Do they have that in other countries, you think? Did we Google they that? They had it quick? somewhere that I literally just read about this, where they have a, a single car or two cars on this on the on the subway that are completely silent so well, people can relax and you know read or do whatever yeah i don't know i used to take the train to work back in the day and uh, there was a quiet car and yeah you were prohibited from using your phone you're prohibited I from like listening we get to a music. Half point for this i agree so uh because oh. all right i love me some half credit yeah you're Man breaks world record for most cu Rubik's Cubes solved underwater. Uh, Iliaram Sikar from Chennai, India, combined physical endurance with mental skill to create, achieve a new Guinness World Record title for the most Rubik's Cubes solved underwater, managing six. Spending two minutes and 17 seconds underwater without br breathing breaks, Iliam was able to beat the previous record of five Rubik's Cubes solved. I don't know. This feels like it would probably be false. Uh... Mostly because don't they always complain about the water quality in India? Would you be able to go under the water and do this without getting some kind of terrible disease? Well, they do have swimming I pools. I mean, you know, it... well, that's true. Um, I don't, I don't know. think I'm, they I'm... did it in the Ganges. <laughs> <laughs> Is the Ganges in India? I don't even fucking yeah. know that. Yeah, it's one of the dirtiest rivers in the world. Well, there you go. Um, I I'm gonna I'm gonna say true. I'm gonna say true. Okay. I'm also gonna say true. You're both correct. Yes. I feel like five was kind of low for the number that was solved underwater, but I guess you know maybe nerds that spend all their time fucking around with Rubik's cubes don't work on their breath holding skills. I don't know because that's probably yeah. I imagine you're like nervous and like the water probably does something to the rotation that makes it feel a little funny and it just yeah. Yeah, I can I can imagine that. City installs giant fans to blow away pigeons from public squares. Part art movement and part city funded project, Denton, Texas installed giant gigantic steel fans in public squares to scare away pigeons. And you pick the second craziest fucking state to talk about. <laughs> or something like this feels like it could be true. And they power it with the tears of school children. <laughs> um I, I'm uh, false. I don't have like a strong gut instinct about this one. Um, so I'll just, I'll, I'll go with false too. Correct. It is false. Oh, right. I feel like we've done really good. Yeah, you guys are doing great. All right, two more. Next one, Japanese town deploys robot wolf to scare away bears. Bear attacks in Japan have been at rising at an alarming rate. So the city of Takiwawa installed a robot wolf as a deterrent. The robot wolf was originally designed to keep wild animals from farmlands, but is now being used by local governments and managers of hallway, highways, golf courses, and pig farms. Hmm. Like like panda bears? Like they're acting like everybody's made out of bamboo. Your ass is getting eaten. Um, I'm gonna, are, are they even in Japan or is that China? <laughs> You're really showing your sharp geography and, and cultural skills. <laughs> Look, I, I, got, I got nothing on that end of things. Uh, I'm going to say, I feel like this could be true. I also feel like it could be true. 
You guys are right. It's, it's true. true. Yes. Well, wolf anywhere. It's going to be in Asia somewhere. I, Japan's so cool. And also, I didn't think you would came up with a fake city that you couldn't pronounce properly. Or <laughs> I don't know if you did it wrong or right, but you weren't uncertain. So I was like, I don't think you'd be like, yes, let me make this city something that I am not confident saying, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Japanese man cooks his own genitals and serves them up to paying guests at a dinner party. Mayo Shugiyama cooked his own genitalia and garnished them with mushrooms and parsley. Five guests paid around 160 pounds each for the meal. I heard of something like this happening before. He must have had massive balls in order to feed five people. Just uh, like fall. thin little slices with, you know, a lot of mushroom padding. He's really on a cracker. <laughs> Is mushroom too on the nose for a penis tip? You know, like what cap, goes yeah. with... <laughs> and he served them with a garnish of balloon knot. Um, I'm going to say false. <laughs> I false. hope it's Saying false. Saying false, false. Okay, yeah. it is true. Damn it! I knew I heard of somebody doing that before. <laughs> I just didn't want to be that true. That might have been true. You should have said true. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I said that, but I just, I okay, but that was just. I feel like I don't want this to be true. I passionately wish that this is not a real thing. Uh, how does somebody even come up with that idea? Also, I feel like you but, undercharged. I think I'm gonna something. cut my my balls off and cook them and feed them to people well here i have an article on this uh this is the daily mail uh so i don't know take that with a grain of salt because it is the daily mail but a man who had his genitals removed seasoned them before cooking them for five paying dinner party guests has been claimed mayo shugiyama 22 who is asexual had under voluntarily undergone surgery to have them removed but the illustrator took his frozen penis and scrote him home from the hospital and organized a grim party. His, he so it wasn't just the balls, it was the whole thing. Oh, it was the whole package, yeah, scrote Oh, all. there you go. He probably had a big old hog, and that's why he was able to feed that many people. Yeah, he, he even took his scrotum. He, he, uh, so he charged guests around 160 pounds per person to eat his severed genitalia in Tokyo, Japan. They were garnished with mushrooms and parsley. Before tucking into dinner, guests sat down to listen to a piano recital and take part in a panel discussion. Okay. Mayo, Isn't that cannibalism? Yeah, it is cannibalism. Shouldn't that be illegal? And, and shouldn't also, like, don't most people, and maybe these people didn't, don't, like, most of us have something that's built into us that if you eat human flesh knowingly, it makes you sick as hell and, like, drives you crazy? I don't know about making you crazy, but it certainly can't make you feel well. I I don't know, man. But, I mean, so... if I'm going to eat some dick, it's going to be raw and just the way nature intended. He was originally considering eating his own penis, but then uh, he decided to serve them up to someone else, I guess. Wait, so he could get 160 pounds for five people. I mean, that's he way undervalued his junk. Now, this was in 2012, so that was you know 12 years ago. But wow. still, uh, pounds to U.S. dollars. So one pound, so one sixty, so two hundred bucks a person. So he made about a thousand bucks United States by today's currency. Can you look it up for two thousand twelve? Sure. Inflation. Calculator. Maybe it was better. I find it interesting that he didn't try his own genitalia. Like he was going to eat it, but they decided not to. Like I would want to sit to dinner and eat. Somebody's genitalia with them. He took I don't a little know. nibble while he was cooking it. He was like got a little bit of foreskin. It was like, hmm. Just make sure you're seizing it properly. Yeah. You know. So that works out to about fourteen hundred bucks in by by today's standards. So I that's... don't think you could pay me fourteen hundred bucks to cut my wang off and feed it to people. But well, they wanted to do it in in, in the anyway. They were voluntarily getting their genitalia cut, which there's many reasons to do that. I suppose I I don't know what I was imagining. I don't know why I'm defending this. This is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure either. So you know what that is. You know what that is. That is the oversensitivity drive jumping in, going, "Well, no, <laughs> there must be a rational. You can't just say, but mm, fuck, I can't defend this. <laughs> there is no rational. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Oh my god, Mike, <laughs> what is your song of the week, sir? Um I know that it was one from Kerry King. Uh <laughs> As usual, I am ill prepared. Trophies? Oh, trophies of of the tyrant, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. which uh, it just uh, I mean, my biggest reason for picking this was uh, that uh, I mean, Kerry King, as you guys may or may not know, I don't know, was the uh, one of the founding members and uh, guitarist for Slayer. Oh, okay. Uh, one of my favorite thrash metal bands, and probably anybody who listens to thrash metal would say one of their favorites or their opposer. But um, <laughs> when the band uh, retired, uh, he was he was hinting that he was going to put out he was going to continue playing. Well, yeah, sorry, he wasn't hinting that he was what he was going to continue playing. He outright said that he was going to continue, but he kept saying like, "Oh, the album's going to be out. The album's going to be out." And it seemed like it took forever to get here, but uh, since it did, it's it's amazing, and I wanted it to be part of our playlist. And that song kind of spoke to me, if you listen to the lyrics of it. Yeah, that's something I don't know if you were familiar or were aware of, Amber. Any song that adds, gets added to the Song of the Week uh, list goes to a permanent playlist on YouTube that's featured on our channel. That's cool! Yeah, I so, love that. So that people can like jump in and vibe with it, you know, if they find, you know, because I mean, our music list, I mean, when you go and look at it, um, it's pretty eclectic. There's a lot of. I was going to say it's got to be diverse, knowing you it's guys. A, very well. Yeah. That and the guests that we've had on as well. You know who've who've added to it. So it's it's just a it's an interesting little. I think it's probably about an hour and a half, two hours of music right now, something like that. So, yeah, it's coming along nicely. Amber, what was your song of the week? Mine was uh, Madame Helga by Stereophonics which they were one of the earliest concerts that I saw. Um, they were the opener for Muse back in the day, which oh, was wow. awesome. But I loved Stereophonics. I thought they were great. And um, this is off of their fourth album, um, You Gotta Go There to Come Back, which is my favorite album of theirs too. And I just feel like a lot of people don't, haven't heard them. And this is like kind of like a, a rock one that just feels yeah. classic to me and I really like it. It's something I work out to pretty regularly. It's like a very classic and clean rock song. Yes. The, the first to time me, I listened I enjoyed to it. it. The first time I listened to it, I was kind of lukewarm about it. But on second listen, I was like, no, I like this. This is good. Like it grew on me. So I definitely, I mean, I added it to my playlist as well. So oh, um, awesome. I usually do because I am, I'm thirsty for music all the time. I'm always, I'm a simp for music. Oh, well, let me music. plug that whole album again then. It was good. I, I really loved the, that album. So I will, I'll gotta go there to out. come back. Okay, I'll check that out because when I'm editing this, I'll need something to listen to while it's compiling. Uh, so my song of the week was The Devil Inside Me by Matt Berry. And if you think you know who Matt Berry is, you're probably right because Matt Berry is the guy from What We Do in the Shadows. He has been in The Mighty Boosh. He's been on a show called uh, uh, Snuffbox with Rich Fulcher. Uh, what else has he been in, Mike? Can you think of anything else off the top He's of your head? He's also on a show that I can't remember what the name of it is, but he plays an actor uh, trying to make shows in Hollywood. I cannot fucking remember what the name of it is. Well, he was in the IT crowd, too. Yes. And I literally have said I would listen to this man read a phone book or an ingredient list or whatever. So, of course... I enjoyed listening to this thoroughly. Oh, Toast of the Town. Toast of Toast of Hollywood or Toast of something, I think is what the name of it is. Okay. There you go. Tens a Toast of Tinseltown. Yeah, there you go. His, na his name is Toast in that, if I'm not mistaken. It's his last name. Oh. Stephen Toast. So yes. I got to find this. This sounds awesome. I love him. It's, it's interesting. I will tell you that. It's... You're, uh, like it's you, you're not going to be laughing out loud at stuff to me at least it wasn't like that it was a lot more thinkers and a lot more weird shit than it was you know outright funny stuff that sounds me. like that sounds like snuff box because rich falcher um also from the boosh uh did a show with matt berry called uh, snuff box and 
it's very gallows humor type stuff. There's a lot of dark stuff going on. But you actually sent me a clip recently, Mike, where he's like, there, <laughs> Matt Berry is like talking to this person in a bar. And he's like, oh, yeah, and he's got these tray of drinks that he's carrying for her. And he's chatting her up. And then she says, so who's this fool? This is she yours. Killed me. This, yeah. is, this is hers. And this is hers. And who's this fool? My boyfriend goes, fuck you. And he just throws the, the drinks <laughs> on the ground. And it goes on through, what, like four people that he does that Yeah, to. he does it with a fucking aquarium at one point. He, he throws a dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like, oh, my boyfriend's fishing. He's like, fuck you, and throws the aquarium on the ground. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that, shit, that had me crying when I watched it. Yeah, it's Like, genius. literally anything that man does, I will sit and watch. It's anything. Genius. He's a genius. Yeah, yeah, he's absolutely a genius. And his voice is, like, creamy, delicious. It's like a, it's like a good French vanilla coffee. It's a little, a little sweet, but that strong powerful after after effect of the the co the caffeine yeah yeah he's like a, a, dis a delicious cup of coffee his voice. i love that i was watching what we do in the shadows when you sent the song and i had it paused on his face as i pulled up the song and went like oh <gasps> <laughs> <It was laughs> like, awesome. oh my god this was meant to be <laughs> it was meant to be My chair has sweat on it. Oh, hi, Bowser. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love my shirt. You guys know I'm a little Nintendo nerd. I, I, was, I was checking out your Bowser and your Donkey Kong there because they were right in the camera. Oh, well, you should see my chode. My Oompa Loompa. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a chode, I'd be willing to look at it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Why not? Oh. Lots of experience. You guys want to do a quiz? Yeah, let's do <laughs> yeah, a quiz. Yay! So I will say Harmony is no longer doing the podcast. She's got a super busy life and I completely understand it. It's all on understandable and good terms. But she is giving me my blessing to continue the podcast with uh, a new co-host or guest co-host. And I'm thinking about doing guests next season. So if either of you would want to join and Absolutely. be a Christmas for a day. Okay. <laughs> I would love that. I, I, at the very least, I'll, I'll stand in as a quiz mister. Yeah, you can that be. Sounds, well, okay. So actually, I only quiz do... mister sounds really kind of dirty. A quiz? Oh, God. So I was going to say <laughs> quiz mister. Sounds like you're has making all those quizzes for... moist. You're missing them. Moist. I'm moist right now. Um, <laughs> quiz mister has been reserved for people who donate to our Patreon. Um, oh yeah so uh you actually get titles on there but i i had weirdly it's like a lot of my exes who, <laughs> who donate to my patreon <laughs> so it's got that 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 kind of like hmm side to it quiz yeah, that, that's interesting yeah i don't know i keep good oh, relationships fine. with my exes though for the most part fine, all them before bastards. we start this quiz and this is not a political side at all but I read somewhere that George Santos started an OnlyFans, but it's not sexual. And he made it very clear. Oh, this is about the insides of what's going on in, in, in politics and stuff. But everyone's like, well, I'm not signing up if you're not showing some peen. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly he did. <laughs> He's like, all right, you want to see my dick? Fine. But anyway, yeah, let's quiz. Bum, bum, quiz, people. <laughs> is, that, is that how you open your podcast? That's gonna be my new yeah, bum bum quiz bum, people. Bum, quiz people. <laughs> yeah, with the stutter and the slight hesitation, I think that really sells. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you didn't know what you're gonna do. I love that approach. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Well, I didn't right now. Maybe I'll just use this audio. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it's being recorded, thankfully. So, which quiz did we decide on? Um, I'm the only I one who actually had to do with food. Well, that's yeah, all of them except for one. Yeah, yeah, I sent six related to food and one related to queer stuff. So <laughs> it's a very oh boy, amber I feel like blend. We need to do the queer stuff one and a food one. We need to do two of them. Oh yay! More quizzes! Yay! Okay. I, think, I think two of them seems right. Yes. Yeah. You agree with me, Thomas? Yeah, I think we can do that. 
Alright. Alright, so send us send us which one are we gonna do first? Now don't forget I can't read anything because I don't have the ability to get this stuff on my phone, so it's okay, we have Tom's lovely voice. Uh creamy and rich, like a vanilla latte with a drizzle of raspberry. Raspberry. <laughs> yeah. I would go with caramel, but all right. I was gonna go caramel, but I feel like we've put, pimped caramel too much on the already. We've been talking about nougat and caramel. I, I was like, let's give it, let's give it that little bit of Tom's I love test. Caramel. I just want to say I that. I do love caramel. I do, like, but I love raspberry too. Yeah. So like a I. white chocolate raspberry mocha is like <laughs> perfect. All right, so here's our food quiz. I can guess your favorite season based on the fried foods you choose. You're gonna pick one of the following four items and tell me which one you like the best. Chicken okay. tenders, French fries, karache, or pot stickers. Oh, karage, the fried Japanese uh, chicken, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Karage. Yeah. So okay. another type of chicken. And what was the last one? Pot stickers. Ooh. Like dumplings. Uh, French fries for me, definitely. Okay, French fries. I'm okay with French fries. I love. I mean, I, like I, chicken tenders. Sometimes you can get ones that are kind of gross and have a mm -hmm. weird chunk in them or something. French fries or, or that doesn't weird. happen. Also, yeah, yeah, like chicken tenders have sometimes have a weird aftertaste to them. I've noticed mm -hmm. that I don't like. Not all so chicken I'm, tenders are created equal. Not at all. But yeah, you're right. French fries are pretty okay. I'm on board with the French fries. French too. fries just sound good right now. So. Yeah. I'd have to know which season was my favorite before we started anyways, right? Because I fucking, I can't, I'm not sure. It's our cumulative maybe, favorite season. So yeah, maybe it'll <laughs> tell me, maybe it'll tell me. There you All go, right, so. you need to know. Yeah. All right, so we've got cronut, which I assume is like a donut. It's a croissant donut. Okay. Yeah. I don't like them that much. I, I mean, I've I don't know that anybody's them. gonna be upset. No. It's fine, like I, like, croissants or donuts on their own but together it was just like a meh experience for me like it was a well i mean i tried peanut butter and tuna fish once i like each one of them separately but together they're fucking disgusting so yeah i don't think it's bad as tuna you really did have peanut butter and tuna fish once i tried it when i was a kid once i thought it might be okay uh you never know unless you try it was fucking horrible okay you know. <laughs> Yeah. It's like I, I also filled a cereal bowl with orange juice and cereal one time thinking it might be good. And it was not it was not good. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. You ever eat cut raw cocoa? Yeah. Have you ever like okay. made chocolate milk with raw cocoa when you were a kid thinking it was we had chocolate like an milk? Old mix? Can of quick powder in my house that had to have been from the early eighties. And in the nineties I was still using it to make chocolate milk. <laughs> So, I'm going to say that I have not been the most discerning when it came to food. <laughs> yeah. All right. But I used to so, save like whole spoonfuls out of that shit and just like eat it, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, we were doing the cinnamon challenge before it existed mm -hmm. and making it through. Yeah. All right. So, cronuts, funnel cake, hash browns, or spring rolls? A funnel cake every time. Yeah, I was oh going to say funnel God, cake. I love funnel cakes. I oh could kill God. some funnel cake, cake right now. Yeah. I yeah. want I want a funnel cake and fries, guys. We're definitely we're definitely getting summer. I'm going to predict that right now. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty. Yeah, pretty that's clear. Summer, funnel but... cake in the winter. So yeah. I would eat a funnel cake in the I'd winter. I would eat funnel cake any time of the year. Uh, Rudders, one of the convenience stores around us, has funnel cake fries. They're delicious. Fucking amazing. <laughs> They are delicious, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm jelly. And they're available all year round. <sighs> all right, so chicken croquettes, goyoza, Korean fried chicken, or mozzarella sticks. Oh, boy. I love I these mozzarella sticks, sticks, but I also Mo love chicken croquettes. I'm going mozzarella sticks, guys. I need I'm some cheese have, in I, my I, life. I got to go with that, too. I'd say it's some tonight, in fact, so yeah. Ooh. All right, let's see here. Fried chicken, curry pop, muruku, or sesame balls. Like, <laughs> I don't fucking have any idea what those middle two were. And yeah, sesame balls. Could ball, you say the second one again? Sounds dirty. Curry pop. Curry pop. Curry pop. 
K A R I P A P. Creep. Curry pop. I need to look at this. Curry pop. I, it, it was like, do you mean curry puff? No. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a popsicle made of curry? Oh. Guaranteed sesame to balls burn are from super front good, though. Back. You get, have you guys had sesame balls before? I have. They're not no. that great. I think they're good, but it depends on where I they're I like made. sesame stuff, so I probably would like sesame balls. They're just a little too sweet for my liking. Uh, Open uh, sesame uh, balls. <laughs> what was on, the first Dora. one? Fried chicken. Hey, yeah, I guess we're going Tom, fried chicken. Yeah, Tom, I know I know your love of fried chicken. Yeah. yeah. So that was your first choice, and I will agree with that. All right. Uh, so corn dogs, egg rolls, lumpia, or pakora. Ooh, Pecora might be. <laughs> it's like every time it's only one of two choices for me because I have no idea what the other things are. Lumpia is super, super good. Egg rolls are good too. I, I like all these things, so maybe I'm not helpful on this one. I like egg rolls a lot. Yeah, let's, I would go with either egg rolls or corn dogs. Uh, yeah, and corn dogs, I mean, eh, I could take or leave corn dogs. Actually, now that I think about it, either egg rolls or Pecora, I'm good with either one of those. I gotta say egg rolls for me. Let's go egg rolls. Egg rolls? It's the universally favored option. All right. And beignets, fish fingers, jalapeno poppers, or vada? I and love beignets. jalapeno poppers with an undying love, just so you I've guys know. I've never had a beignet before, but they sound amazing. Mm-hmm. Beignets are good. You said jalapeno poppers. I've never even had jalapeno poppers, really. <gasps> How have you never had? Because I just, you know, like I normally have to order for myself, my kids and everything, and they're not going to eat that. The spicy you know what I mean? stuff, yeah. So sometimes I don't get the stuff that I would, I might eat otherwise. I think I'd still go with it because I eat jalapenos and shit. So sure, why not jalapeno poppers? Nice. I'm glad okay. I swayed that one. I I, <laughs> I have a strong love <laughs> jalapeno poppers. <laughs> All right, donuts, fried calamari, popcorn, chicken, or scotch eggs. Ooh, scotch eggs all the way. I love scotch eggs too, and I it, never, I only get them during Ren Fair, which is great. I tried well, making a I'm homemade out. one, and it was pretty good. You I'm haven't tried scotch egg? Because I was going to go with the first choice. What was the first was, one again? Donuts. Yeah, donuts. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm very meh on donuts. There are some that I like, but most of them I think are too sweet for me. So. I will fuck up some donuts. So <laughs> I will, I will, I will dissent on this one. You guys may go with scotch eggs. Cool. So we were gonna never anyway. had a scotch egg. I know what they are, but I never had one. They're good. All right. So next, Aranisi or Arancini, uh, A R A N C I N I. I think it's Arancini, but I'm not sure. It's like the rice that's fried, and it's like Italian um, or risotto. With cheese and breaded and fried. Well, this is like a little that ball. Sounds really good. Yeah, it does. Katsu, samosas, or nuggets? What kind of nuggets? Chicken nuggets. Corn nuggets would have been good. Not an option in this case. <laughs> Obviously. I like samosas. It's a bunch of things I've never heard of and chicken nuggets. So, I like chicken uh, nuggies. Your nuggies yeah, are I, got, good. I got the nugs. Nuggy, nuggies are also less easy to screw up than chicken tendies, I've noticed. Yes. Like chicken t fingers are, I mean, chicken fingers get fucked up a lot, but okay. Churros, falafel, panty puri, or tempura? Hmm. Well, I do like me some churros. Yeah. Yeah, I've I'm actually, big on I churros. Think I've actually had falafel before, and I like that too. Um, I'm I just love gonna go falafel. Churros. Falafel's delicious, go but I've had yeah. bad falafel too, and I've rarely had a bad churro. Uh, don't get the ones from Subway because they are not good. Oh no! Yeah, they are like fucking cardboard with cinnamon. Scientists at MIT just developed that. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually <laughs> plant based. <laughs> <laughs> so, are we going with churros here? Yes. All that right. was such a callback. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. All right, so <laughs> let's see here: crab cakes, Ooh. fish and chips, onion rings, or mm. zapoli. I have no idea what the last one is, but boy, that was a hell of a fucking. I, 
Boy, I love onion rings. I love crab cakes, and I enjoy fish and chips. Jesus. I'm gonna go with fish and chips personally, because that picture but looks it delicious. It's hard to beat a good crab cake, man. Crab cakes are I'm, fucking amazing. We're ruling you out, unfortunately, because I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta throw in for crab cakes. Like, I'm not gonna say no to crab cakes. So yeah, fish and mm. chips is the more reasonable option. So it's something that I would have more often than if somebody just gave me yeah. like if they're like all things equal and you can get one of these things, I'd be like, give me the crab cakes because that's expensive. Like so, beer battered onion rings are amazing too, but I think crab cakes, yeah. I do like onion rings too. So, I like fried food, guys. Go would figure. you like to Bang. guess what season we got? Summer. Correct. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, which summer. is my least favorite season, as yeah, evidenced right. by the sweat on I'm, my chair right now from I my legs. I love baseball and everything, but I don't like having sweat and stank in places that I do not the rest of the year. I think they, uh, they like the bright side of summer is summer food, you know, like fresh mm -hmm. fruits and then fried stuff at the fair, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I like the beach, but I like the beach more for like, like the evenings when it's cool and, and the breeze is coming in off the, the water. And I'm like, I'm not really big on the sun in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This motherfucker yeah. right here and right there and right there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And so you like the beach, but how do you feel about the biatch? I feel fine about the biatch. Okay. But I, I could I like... agree with our favorite season to eat fried foods is the summer. Mm -hmm. That Fair might enough. be there. I can find a kernel of truth in it. But uh, yeah, overall, I'd say either fall or spring for me. I like the the rain of the spring, but I like the crispness yeah. of the fall. So it's sort yeah, of like the a fall toss is pretty up. magical when you first when you break out your first uh, flannel or hoodie. Mm -hmm. Like the first time you wear one, and you're like, ah, oh, this is perfect. Yeah, and then yeah. You're, my favorite. And then my you crack favorite. open like a cider or like a like a crisp like Pilsner beer for that time of year. Plus, that's the time of year when they start selling Mad Elf, which is my favorite like seasonal beer. Yeah. It's 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 a beer that's like what is it like nine? The New beer. It's yeah. like nine or ten percent alcohol by volume. It's ridiculous. I think it might be eleven. Yeah, it's I think insane. Eleven percent. Yeah. This is the third it's podcast in as many weeks where we're ending it talking about beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not ending yet. We still have another quiz to do. Oh, that's right. We do have another quiz to do. I forgot. I mean, we can certainly talk about beer at the end of that, too, though. All right. Let's get back on track. We have a, 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 a quiz. Yes, another we quiz. do. It's Pride oh. Month when we're recording this. So very... Am I, I going to read this one or do you want to read this one? Oh, I want you to read it. Okay. Well, I could pull it up. Actually, never mind. Why am I shying away from it? I did a pride panel at my work. I actually moderated the panel, which was cool. And scary, I'm, but mostly I, cool. I'm going to follow along on my side here. but So this is BuzzFeed. Which queer book should you read next? Head to a pride event and I'll tell you. First, where is the pride event you're getting ready for? Is it in San Francisco, Provincetown, Massachusetts, West Hollywood? New York, New York, Madrid, Spain, or Sydney, Australia? Sydney. Sure. Sydney? Sydney. Australia. All right, we're going for it. Snake in a tree oh, be damned. Go down under. What type of event is it? A bar crawl, a parade, an LGBTQ plus film festival, a drag bunch, just a small celebration with friends, or an outdoor concert or festival? I'm going drag all the way. Oh my that God, me the, too. That is the most fun. Yes, heartily agree. Who are you attending with? Just me and my bestie, a decently large friend group, your partners, your family, a whole bunch of people, or I'll just meet people there. Uh, my family. They'd be pissed if I went without them. I also agree. We're agreeing so much. I am one of the first prides I went to. My goddaughter was actually walking in it and with her church, which was so freaking cool. What are you snacking on as you get ready? Popcorn, macarons, a bagel, grilled cheese, pizza, or cupcakes? I got to say that pizza looks weird. 
The pizza does look weird. It's got it's like, it looks cherry like a fruit tomatoes. Pizza. <laughs> what are those? Be orange bell pepper, maybe yellow bell pepper, green bell pepper, or cucumber, or jalapeno, and then purple onion. Yeah. It's a, a veggie pizza. It's definitely a veggie pizza. I That's don't know. pretty good. I, I, it's not my type of pizza. But anyway, I would probably go with pizza all the same. You were like, not the pizza, but pizza. Yeah, because I can't <laughs> say no to pizza. pizza. <laughs> <laughs> what are you sipping on? Just some ice cold water, soda, a smoothie, beer, a fancy cocktail, or it's shots kind of night? Oh, man, it's shots. We're going to fucking see drag. It's shots. Shots, 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 yeah. I would have said beer, but I'll go with shots. Sure. What would you have picked? Beer. Oh, beer. Well, oh, then we could end it on beer. Well, almost. All right. Have well, to talk about it. Shots. Shots happen. Sorry. Shots fired. Pick a song to have blasting as you get ready. 360 by Charlie XCX. Slut Pop by Kim Petras. Hot to Go by Chappelle Rowan. He Knows by Camila Cabello featuring Little Nas X, Boa by Megan Thee Stallion, or Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter. I'm going to go with Slut Pop because it's cool sounding and I don't know any of the other ones. I don't know. I love Little Nas X. Uh, he's fucking hilarious and an amazing artist. Uh, I like Little Nas X too. So. I also know Sabrina Carpenter because of my daughter, but uh, I'm going to go with Little Nas X. Sorry. I didn't okay. like Espresso very much. I thought it was, I like, I really support her music career and I know that's what she wants to do. And that's great. I just didn't love the song. So, oh, we get another choice and another one. Turn It Up by Pink Panther S. Rush by Troy Sivan. Boys and Girls by Conan Gray. Lunch by Billie Eilish, After Hours by Kalani, or I'm Still Standing by Elton John. is so fucking dirty, but so good. I'm going to go with Billie Eilish. I'm going to go My with daughter would kill me if I said anything else. I'm going with I'm Still Standing by Elton John. Oh, I'm Still Standing gets it for me. I, yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm an Elton John fan. Uh, oh, boy. This one's going to be tough because it's a visual one and Mike can't um, see. All right, you're, now well, you you're moving on to an outfit. One. Pick a top. And so there's like an orange and white with some red in it. Like, uh, what would that pattern be? Like a flannel pattern. Like a cutoff flannel shirt, but it has a collar. There's a tank top that's just a rainbow crop top. There is this shoulder length down. Like it looks like wigs or shiny tinsel put together. Once Purple you said tinsel. crop top, that was enough for me. Yeah, you're going. All right. So, oh, we're not mesh done net. yet, Mike. We have a mesh net, like almost like a bondage style top. Yes, wow. very much so. Um, kind of like too. a sexy professional top, really bright red, you know, button up with shoulder cutouts. And then just a, a regular tank top with like a rainbow across it. I don't know, man. The mesh top or the crop top? That's like, that's toss up. I couldn't pull off the, well, I mean, I guess I could. I just wouldn't go out with a mesh top with nothing on underneath. <laughs> so. Well, if you went to the Pride that we went to, there was plenty of that going on. Yeah, that's just not me. So I'm leaning more no, towards the crop saying, top yeah. out of your choices. What do you think, I mean, Tom? you guys can choose whatever you want. You don't have to go off my choice. Um, I'm going to go with the crop top, I guess. That's the, what's, that's the second one, right? Yeah, second one. Okay. Exactly. Uh, something for the bottom, a uh, yellow leather skirt, um, black leather pants, uh, blue jeans, a pair of light teal blue shorts, um, a, a kind of see-through skirt, pink with little flowers, or not flowers, hearts all over it, or um, just fishnets on bottom with some rainbow socks. I'm sorry, fishnets and rainbow socks feels like it, it goes well. With our cute little crop top? That's, yeah, that's what I would okay. think, yeah. Okay. I wish I could pull off leather pants, but I can't. So what would your choice be? I, I kind of want to go with leather pants just because we're dreaming here. But, I mean, you guys both... I agree with leather pants, too. I think they'd look hot with our little rainbow crop top, so I'm all right with that. Okay. Time for shoes. Red spiked platform heels. Uh, white tinnies with like a cork board almost texture on the bottom. Um, blue roller skates with pink wheels. 
white platform tennis shoes with the rainbow at the bottom and black boots that are like a chunky heel or multicolored sandals with a little strap over the ankle. Boots. Now I gotta say the roller skates sound amazing because there's a lot of walking to do and it'd be fun to roll everywhere, but <laughs> that'd be hard as fuck on the ankles for an all day event. Oh yeah. So I'm thinking the black chunky heel boots. Yeah, because the it's got a thick heel, so it wouldn't be too bad to stand on for the day. Plus, it's got to go with those leather pants. Yeah, it is. We're going to look super hot. All right, an accessory to add to your fit. Heart sunglasses, a rainbow bag that looks plastic, just like a grocery bag. <laughs> um, uh, nails that have hearts and rainbows and cute little characters on them. Um, what does that remind me of? Uh, like Hello Kitty type things. Yeah. Um, a stripe along your cheeks and your nose that's rainbow from purple to red, like this. It looks really cute on her. So I hope I'm describing it well. And a quality sign with rainbow uh, lines above it and below it, or like a floaty butterfly winged sheer yellow blue pink kind of flowy thing just so you can keep doing this the whole time you are the parade i was good with the glasses to be quite honest i am too yeah i like the glasses glasses work finally how do you hope the evening will end with you having met someone new with your partner or partners and you cuddling with you going just going with the flow uh, you want to have fun and then be in bed by 10.30 p.m. with you binging the new season of Bridgerton and eating ice cream. <laughs> or you just hope the evening doesn't end until the sun is up. 10.30. Oh, my God. I'm so that person. I want to, I mean, I would kind of agree that that's probably reality for me, but uh, I'd want to rock till the early morn, till the break of dawn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it as long as I can. Okay, let's I want to cuddle that. with partners. Oh, I like cuddles. Yeah. We're split. We're divided. Does somebody want to flip a coin? It's cuddling in bed by 1030 or uh, hope the evening doesn't end up till the sun is up. I'm going to go with ending with the sun going up. Okay. All right. You should read. Oh, my God. My sister is going to be so excited. She loves this book so much. You should read Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. She is literally obsessed with this. She tells everybody about it. She loves her like cutesy gay boy romance as she says it. She is going to be stoked. Um, the movie adaption garnered a lot of attention for its chemistry between lead actor Taylor Zakar Perez and Nicholas Galiz Galizatine? Galitzine? I don't know how to say that. Galaxy. Chemistry that can only be matched by the characters from the book itself. The first son of the United States, Alex Claremont Diaz, and Prince Henry of England give us force uh, approximately enemies to lovers and so much more. Hmm. Interesting. Like I said, she loves that book. So if it was going to be anything, I'm like kind of super glad it was that one. This is for you, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'd normally say, uh, you know, I just looked at the time and we are out of time. So that's going to have to be a story for another time. But I was enjoying what we were talking about. So um, I guess we just have to end because we have to end today. We are out of time. Not just saying it. We actually did run out of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we literally ran out of time. Well, thank you for listening to Storytime with Tom and Mike. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed giving it to you. Giving it to you, like the comment that I made about amputees that I'm kind of uh, sorry about saying, but wanted to draw attention to just one more time because I'm a jackass. But we did enjoy There's having the one. Yeah, there was there was a cat butt. Yeah, that was that was my other cat, Alien. One of them, you know. Um, it was great having you on. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I always love <laughs> always, I, I always fantastic. Always. I have a great time hanging with you guys anytime. All right. Bye. Bye.